All right, so you've heard about the cage system for years. You still kind of have no idea what it is or how to use it. Well, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you in this short video how to use the cage system for chords and scales all around the guitar neck. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Daniel Seraph, and on this channel, every week I'm sharing with you the things that I've learned in the last 15 years as a professional guitarist and teacher. And I'm sharing them with you, the intermediate guitarist, so that you can learn everything you need to know in order to improve. So if you're new to this channel, make sure to go ahead, hit that subscribe button below, and ring that bell so that you know every time I upload a new video. All right, so by the end of this lesson, you're gonna learn two of the most important reasons why the cage system is so useful for us. All right, so before we dive into the lesson, I wanna make sure that if you're here, you already either know the notes on the guitar neck or know how to figure them out. And if you don't know that information, well, on my YouTube channel here, a couple videos ago, I did a video on the best and quickest way to learn the notes on the guitar neck. So you should go ahead and click above and check that out. All right, let's dive into the lesson. So the first thing about the cage system that is so fantastic in regards to learning the guitar neck is that C, A, G, E, and D spell caged. And those are represented by our open chords, our classic, what some people call cowboy chords, or open chords. C, A, G, E, and D. And you'll notice those are all major chords, and that's where this method starts. Okay, and the thing about the system is it takes our open chords, C, A, G, E, and D, and helps us to turn them into movable chords that we can play all across the guitar neck. Now, you might say, I don't care about that. Why do I wanna do that? I'm perfectly happy playing my chords down here. Well, here's the reality. If you go to play, like you're an intermediate guitarist and you go to play with some people, you wanna jam. If everyone's just strumming, A, it's not gonna be interesting. And B, it's actually gonna kind of fight a little bit with one another. If you have a bunch of different guitar players playing the exact same chords, it just doesn't sound that great. And that's why the cage system is so amazing. We can take these basic chords and turn them into movable chords. So let me demonstrate that for you. Here we go, we're gonna take the C shape first. And notice I call it the C shape. Okay, and I play my classic C chord. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually going to free up my pointer finger. I want to press down the exact same notes, but instead of uh, using my pointer finger, I want that to be free in order to create a bar. Okay, now if I start to move this up every string an equal amount, all of a sudden I lay my pointer finger down and I have this movable chord that actually has the root note as my pinky on that fifth string, the A string. And again, those are all major chords, but I can move them all over the guitar neck and it sounds great. Okay, let's look at the A-shaped chord. All right, so the A-shape, you know, some people play it index, middle, and ring. Some people play it, you know, with a, a bar. Some people play it middle, ring, and pinky. Here, what I want you to do, however you play it, is I want you to play it instead with middle, ring, and pinky here so that we can free up this pointer finger. And then what we're gonna do is move everything equally up and around. Now some people you might see actually lay a barred ring finger across those three. That's fine. Either way is cool. That first string might ring or it might not. It's not a big deal to be honest. Okay, so we got C, we got A. Let's go to G. Now different people play G different ways. I'm gonna recommend that for this one, in order to make it movable, we're gonna do the one that goes three, two, open, 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 three. And of course, I'll have a chord shape there that you can see. And then we're gonna free up that pointer finger. And then 
if we move everything up equally, boom. And I'm following with this chord, the root, as you can see in the diagram on the sixth string. Okay, that's our G. Let's go to E. Now you're definitely gonna know this one because it's our classic bar chord shape. If we free up that pointer, pointer finger and refinger it, wow, there we go, okay. Boom, we've got that nice movable chord that happens in so much of our music. Very cool. All right, lastly, the D shape. Okay, and on the D shape here, we're uh, gonna refinger that. We got our middle, our pinky, and our ring, and then we move everything up equally. This one's a little stretched. Sometimes people will say that it's a little tough at first. That's okay. If you were working on it, maybe you would start up here at the 12th fret and try and work down as the frets get wider apart. All right, again, a movable chord. So what we did was just created a bunch of chords out of five chords. And that's like the whole reason why you would never ever need one of those crazy, like 20,000 chord books that is that like that thick and it's like got so many chords in it. It's confusing, it's tricky. Like you don't need that at all. This system of the cage system will give you tons of chords. Yes, in this video, we're only talking about major chords, but that's all you need for now. We just expanded our chord vocabulary like crazy. Okay, so that's point number one. If you have any questions or thoughts or anything, go ahead and please leave me a comment below. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions that you have. Let's move on to the second big point. Now that we see these chords across the guitar neck and we can move them around, the amazing thing about the cage system is that we can sync up our scales around them. Now that is very cool. And so basically we have these five shapes of the chords and we have five shapes of scales that fit right with them. Now I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take that C shape and I'm gonna go up to the uh, 12th fret. And the reason is uh, dealing with like the open strings, it's doable and you should learn that at some point, but up 12 frets is easier to see this movable scale shape. Okay, so I'm playing it up here and the scale shape is also called the C shape and it looks like this. And I like to play the chord at the beginning and the end. Okay, great, that was the C shape. Let's go to A. Okay, with the A shape, we'll play this at the third fret. And again, you can play that chord with the bar or not. And you'll play it. Great, okay, let's continue up the neck. Here's where the uh, G shape is going to be. It'll be this scale. We've got the E shape. And finally, the D shape. And it's great, we literally can have full fretboard coverage if we want with those five shapes of the scale that meet the five shapes of the chords. Okay, great, that's all for today about the cage system. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave me a comment below, I'll be happy to help you. And then uh, just to remind you, step one, you wanna think about caged as C, A, G, E, and D, our open chords, free up that pointer finger, turn them into these movable bar chords, and try playing them around the guitar neck. Step two, Check out these five scale shapes and see how they relate to the chord shape and see their positions, and especially in C major at first like we did today. Now, if you'd like, I made a PDF and you can download it below. Just click the link below that's in the description and you can have a PDF of the cage system shapes. Alrighty, and also if you want any more help with the guitar, feel free to head over to danielserif.com where I have a bunch of resources and some great free lessons that you can check out. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon.